Hello and welcome to Fun Bikes TV. Today we're going to go through the steps on how to assemble a KMXR pit or dirt bike. We have taken the bike out of the box and placed it upon a scissor stand. Cut the handlebars free from the packaging. Unravel the cables and place the handlebars on top of the fuel tank. First we are going to connect the handlebars. You will find two bolts with a washer and a spring washer in your pack. We recommend applying stud lock to the threads during this process. Lift the handlebars into place and align with the yokes. Thread the bolts underneath and tighten with a 12 socket. Now we're going to fit the forks. The fork of the mounting bracket needs to be on the left side of the bike. Slide the fork through the yokes. The bottom of the red collar needs to be level with the top of the yoke. Using a 5 hex key, tighten the yokes. Repeat these steps for the other fork. Once both are in place, double check the bolts on the yoke are tight. Next we are going to fit the front mud guard and the number board. Using an 8 socket or spanner, remove the free bolts from under the yoke. Align the front mud guard with the hole on the bottom yoke. Thread the free bolts back into place, applying stud lock beforehand. Then using an 8 socket or spanner, tighten these bolts. Remove the bolt from the centre of the top yoke. On the number board, remove one of the nuts from underneath to loosen the brake hose bracket. Place the number board behind the brake hose and thread the hose through the bracket. Replace the nuts on the nut guard and tighten, using a Phillips screwdriver and an 8 spanner or socket. Align the front number board in place and reinsert the bolt into the centre of the yoke through the number board. Tighten with a Phillips screwdriver. Now it's time to connect the front brake caliper to the front fork. Remove the two bolts from the caliper. Apply stud lock to these bolts. Put the bolt through the top hole on the bracket of the fork and place a washer on the other side. Place the caliper into position and loosely tighten the top bolt. Slide the caliper out of the way and put the bottom bolt through the bottom hole on the bracket and place a washer on the other side. Slide the caliper back into position and thread the bottom bolt through. 
Using an 8 span or a socket, tighten these two bolts. At the top of the fore guard, loosen off the bolts for the bracket. Put the brake hose into the bracket and re-tighten the bolts. Next we are going to put the front wheel on the bike. First remove the pad stop from the caliper. From the axle bolt we remove the nut and the two spacers from the bolt. There are two different size spacers. The larger one goes on the side of the wheel closest to the caliper. You should find it easier to fit in place if you place the washers against the wheel first. Lift the wheel into position and align the disc between the pads in the caliper. Once in place, thread the axle bolt through and thread the nut to the end of the bolt. Using a 17 and 19 spanner or socket, tighten the axle bolt, making sure your wheel spins freely and then apply stud lock to the end of the thread. Using a 12 spanner, check the rim lock and valve are tight. Next move round to the rear of the bike where we are going to attach the rear shock. Insert the shock into the top bracket and feed the bolt through. Thread the nut to the end of the bolt. Using a 12 and 14 spanner, tighten the bolt. Remove the bolt from the bottom bracket on the swing arm. Move the shock and swing arm into place and feed the bolt through. Thread the nut to the end of the bolt. Then using a 13 and 14 spanner, tighten the bolt and apply stud lock to the end of the thread. Time to fit the kickstand to the bike. We recommend taking the bike off your stand to be able to do this. Remove the bolt from the kickstand, place the spring onto the kickstand and where it connects to the bike. Then align the kickstand into position. This can be quite tough. Once aligned, thread the bolt into place and then tighten with a 17 spanner. The kill switch is connected to the plug behind the front forks, just above the oil cooler if your model has one. Let's now set up the handlebars. Using a 6 hex key, check the handlebar clamps are tight. Place the bar pad over the clamps and attach the cover. Using an 8 spanner, loosen the levers and adjust for a comfortable riding position. When you weave tighten these lever brackets, make sure the gaps on both sides of the bracket are the same size.
Next we need to complete a full nut and bolt check of the bike. Starting with the front wheel, using a 5 hex key, check the bolts on the four guards. Using a 6 hex key, check the disc bolts are tight. Going around the wheel, starting at either the valve or the rim lock, check all the spokes are tight on the wheel. If your model has an oil cooler, check the bolts connected it to the bike with an 8 or 10 spanner. Using a 10 spanner, check the top bolts on the oil cooler. Make sure the clip for the oil cooler lines are also tight and repeat the process on the opposite side. Using a 5 hex key, check the plastic bolts on both sides are tight. Using an 8 hex key, check the exhaust shield bolts are tight. Using a 6 hex key, check the subframe mounting bolts and the exhaust mounting bolt. Using a 13 spanner, make sure the kick start is tight. Using an 8 spanner or socket, check the engine mounting bracket and manifold bolts. Using a 10 spanner, make sure the exhaust manifold is tight and apply stud lock. Using a 10 spanner, check the carburetor manifolds are tight on both sides. Using an 8 spanner or socket, check the rear brake master cylinder. Using a 10 and 12 spanner, check the engine mounting bolt is tight and apply stud lock. Using a 12 and 14 spanner, check the rear spring arm and apply stud lock. Using an 8 socket or spanner, make sure the bash plate is tight on both sides. Using an 8 and 10 spanner, check the coil pack behind the plastics. Attach the breather pipe to the top of the fuel cap. Check the seat is secure using an 8 spanner or socket. Using a 6 hex key and a 12 spanner, check the bolts for the exhaust and apply stud lock. Using a 6 hex key, check the bolts on the rear brake. Using a 12 spanner, check the valve and rim lock are tight on the rear wheel. Using a 17 and 19 spanner, check the rear axle is tight and apply stud lock. Using a 10 spanner, check your chain guard is tight and apply stud lock.
Using a 10 and 12 spanner, make sure the lower engine bolt is tight and apply stud block. Using a 5 hex key, check the fuel tap is tight. Using a 6 hex key, check the subframe, engine bolt and engine mounting brackets are tight on this side. Carefully cut the cable for the gear shift and using a 10 spanner or socket, check it is tight. Check the tension on your chain. If you can fit two fingers between the swing arm and the chain, the chain is correct. There is a video in the description below explaining how to change the tension if you need to. Using a 10 spanner, check the chain tension bolts are tight. You will also need to complete a full oil change on this bike. Please check the video in the description if you need assistance. I hope this guide has been some help to you. Many thanks for watching and let the fun begin.